For years, people have dumped all kinds of waste into the ocean, even Coast Guard ships like this. The idea is that new coral will latch onto these massive objects and attract fish. But just because it sinks doesn't mean it will help. In fact, some of these damaged pre-existing coral. Now, a company has said their artificial reef is safe for all marine life. The secret ingredient? It's made from the remains of the dead. There are thousands of memorial reef balls like this one off the eastern seaboard. They've become successful habitats and protect hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate from storm surge flooding. But with natural reefs dying off at an alarming rate, can these underwater graveyards actually make a difference? The two most important factors for a good reef are the materials you use and making sure it stays put. Larry Beggs and his team at Reef Innovations designed this bottom-heavy reef ball to withstand violent sea currents. They can weigh up to five tons. The chemicals in conventional concrete can harm sea creatures, so Reef Innovations has to use a special mix. The concrete is a pH neutralized marine grade concrete that is very important for coral growth. Oysters, corals, invertebrates and stuff that will grow on the reef can attach to the reef ball very easily. The company uses fiberglass panels to form the basic shape of the ball. They insert an inflated buoy to keep the center hollow creating the holes that fish like to swim through. Once the concrete dries, the team rinses the balls with a mixture of sugar and water to expose the surfaces where sea life will grow. This is where the dead people come in. A company called Eternal Reefs uses Larry's creations for their memorials. They've dropped almost 2,500 of them over the past 20 years. We work with families who have lost somebody and had their their loved one cremated, they will come to one of our project sites. The families mix cremated remains with concrete to make a separate centerpiece for the reef ball. They call it a pearl. What you're going to do is you're going to put your hand down, you rock it back and forth. We put fresh concrete on the top of the reef ball, and then they put handprints, they write messages. Families are invited to bring things that represent their loved one's life as long as they're not environmentally harmful. The remains replace some of the sand normally used in concrete. They give you actually the bucket and the mix, and then you pour your remains into that mix, and you stir it. Phyllis Flowers lost her son to brain cancer when he was just 20 years old. So there's my son. I had no idea what the eternal reef was until John found it. In a small way, he was giving back to the world, in his mind, by being able to add to the ecology of the coral reef that will save, of course, our seashores and build back sea animals and fish. Families take their finished reef balls out to the open water, say a few words, maybe a prayer, and drop the memorial down to the seabed. The whole process costs about the same as a conventional cemetery burial. On Florida's Atlantic coast, another company is in the underwater burial business. The Neptune Memorial Reef is the final resting place for over a thousand people. Here, the human remains are mixed into statues shaped like starfish or stingrays. It's also a tourist attraction. We estimate there's probably over 2,000 divers a month that visit the Neptune Reef. Over the past century, people hoped to create scenic dive sites in other places. They've dropped passenger airplanes, car tires, even old battleships. It was really companies looking for cheaper ways of disposing products that they weren't using anymore, or the military had ships or tanks. And I think over time, there's increased recognition that these were not good for the environment. In the early 1970s, a nonprofit working with the Army Corps of Engineers dumped two million tires off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. The group optimistically called it the Osborne Reef. But the coral never grew. Seawater corroded the tires as well as the steel clips and nylon bonds holding them together. They broke apart, wiping out nearby natural reefs. Decades later, Florida began a cleanup expected to end by 2028. 
some 600,000 tires are still down there. Healthy reefs provide a home for a quarter of all marine life, protect thousands of people from hurricane damage, and contribute over $4 billion to Florida's economy every year. But even the best designed artificial reefs can't keep up with climate change. Unless carbon emissions are reduced, all coral reefs could be gone by 2050. It's gonna take all of us and now is the time. This is our decade. For now, reef burials haven't reached the mainstream. Even if every one of the 3.4 million Americans who died last year ended up in their own reef ball, it would still only replace about one square mile of Florida's shrinking reefs. If we did that around the world, it probably would help, but we just, we aren't, you know. So I feel good about what we're doing. Perhaps this kind of memorial is just a person's final act of hope that things can get better. Now's the time where we need a healthy ocean more than ever.